just to, uh, to jump in here a bit and expand on some of these ideas. So uh, an interesting picture that you're painting here of a, a Chinese perception of Western liberal democracy as uh, overly procedural, constitutionally rigid, unable to make uh, long-term uh, decisions. Well, what is the view just in China simply of, of elections? I mean, when, when the Chinese watch the American election, <laughs> what do yeah. they take away from that? Is that an experience that they say to themselves, well, wouldn't it be great if we could have elections every four to five years? Or do they look at that and say, this is something that's just so completely foreign and alien to our culture and how we think about governance in China. Uh, China is the country that invented the uh, uh, public service examination system, what we call the Kirchi system in Sui Dynasty uh, over a thousand years ago. So Chinese uh, system is more or less based on what we call the uh, selection. And uh, today it will be called selection plus election. That's the Chinese political model, how we elect our leaders. And uh, uh, overwhelming uh, emphasis is placed on your performance uh, prior to your current position. Uh, for instance, if you want to be a, a member of the top seven top leadership in the Chinese system, uh, uh, in most cases, uh, it requires two terms as uh, uh, governor number one of a Chinese province. Uh, given the size of China, it means literally you have governed over 100 million people before you come to be, uh, have this uh, qualification uh, for, for, for being nominated for this position when not out of seven. So indeed, based on that, you know, really, we think the U.S. system is uh, a bit, uh, uh, how, how should we put it? Uh, to be frank, Say it. Uh, it will not work very well. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us, because this is really, I find this fascinating, because again, as Westerners, I don't think we often appreciate this enough about China. The, the system of selection, that there's a view in China that you've been at governance, not since the communist revolution, quite the contrary. You've been working on a system of governance literally for something close to two Millennia. Can you talk a little bit more about that and why the Chinese, uh, in your view, really accept that as part of the legitimacy of the system writ large? Uh, most probably, you know, in China's long history, uh, it's already a unified country since 221 BC. So it's already over 2,000 years as a unified country in most Cases. So China is, uh, since then, always a large country, a continental uh, a country, a civilization. I call this civilizational state. It's made up of hundreds of states into one over its uh, long history. So given this large population and challenges for governance, and also in terms of resources per capita, it's much fewer than most other countries. So somehow uh, people generate this culture for meritocracy, for governance. So the, the Chinese invented this uh, you know, uh, relatively neutral government based on competent leaders selected through examinations of all kinds. So uh, in the end, this part of Chinese culture. So it's inconceivable, you know, uh, the Chinese will accept uh, someone like not to mention Donald Trump, <laughs> even Obama, or even George w, or George Bush, W. Bush. You know, uh, by Chinese standards, uh, slightly below the bar, <laughs> it lacks enough experience of governance. Uh, 